Hi, this is Miss Slitton, and this is a how to fill out your data table for your Amgen lab for um, our first lab map, and this is specifically for gel electrophoresis. So we've already done all of this business, and we're here. Um, we've done our gel electrophoresis, and you're wondering how to fill this in. In order to understand that, I want to remind you back here to when we started talking about our predictions about what we thought would happen for our gel electrophoresis. And a lot of you have your photo right now in your hands or in your lab notebook, um, so you can see if it matches our predictions. So we already talked about, just to back it up a little bit, we talked about marker, and this lambda beastie marker has 10 fragments in it, and the marker is gonna move, what could you tell me about any fragments of DNA? What will it do? The larger they are, the slower they are, and the smaller they are, the faster they will move through. Exactly. So that marker, there are 10 fragments, and the smallest piece of fragment is how many base pairs? How many? 500. So marker 10 is 500 base pairs. Marker 1 is 10,000 base pairs. So when we look at marker, we need to look at fragment sizes. So the ones that have fragments are going to be what? Which of these rows have fragments in them? K plus and A plus. Because what does the plus mean? What did you add into those? Restriction enzymes. What do restriction enzymes do? Cut at a specific series of bases. So if I look at whole pecan, it's 5,512 base pairs. But if I've cut it, then I should have two fragments. A fragment that's 807 and a fragment that's about 4700 base pairs. So when K plus gets an electric current to it, it's going to have two fragment pieces, right? But thousands and thousands of each of those fragments, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to visualize something as tiny as DNA. So this um, K plus, the smallest fragment is 807. How far do you think it will travel in relationship to how the marker travels? In between uh, 9 and 10. In between 9 and 10. And I agree with you because marker nine is 1,000 base pairs and marker 10 is 500 base pairs, right? So it makes sense it would travel that far. The bigger piece of K plus, 4705, where do we expect it to travel? Between four and five. Four and five. Marker four is 5,000 base pairs and the big um, pecan is 4,700. So is it gonna be closer to marker four or marker five? What one do you think four. it'll be closest to? Closer to marker four, because it's closer to 5,000 than it is to 4,000. You all right with that? Now, K minus isn't going to travel like that, because the minus means we didn't add any what? Restriction, Restriction enzymes. So this should be what? Whole, whole plasmids. plasmids. But do all whole plasmids travel the same way? No. No, because we know that the super fast ones are the ones that are what? Super coiled. Super and they're going to move super fast, almost as fast as a fragment would. Okay? because it can move easier through the matrix of the gel, the sugar matrix. But then you have ones that are open, so open plasmids, those that are nicked, and then go like this. And then we have those multimers. Those are going to be really slow. So we're going to see a skid mark in the K minuses. Remember, whole pecan is 5512. These are fragments, so we really can't compare to them, you know, because that's like comparing apples to oranges good job okay but I know that it's gonna move if it, if it even if it was super coiled it's gonna be somewhere maybe between markers three and four if it's super coiled and it's gonna look kind of like a skid mark because I'm gonna have super coiled I'm gonna have knit open I'm gonna have nicked and I'm gonna have multimers so let's talk about why we did gel electrophoresis one of the things we wanted to do is did we cut it did we cut it in the right place? And did we ligate? Did we form new combinations? Did we cut it? I'm going to compare K minus to K plus. K plus. It looks markedly different. Yeah? And did I cut it in the right place? I'm going to take K plus and compare it to other fragment known sizes, the control, the marker. Okay? Now let's do A minus and A plus. Let's do the A minus first. It's A minus because it does not contain any what? Restriction, Restriction enzyme. So, um, how big is it? It's 48. So compared, whole PR at a whole pecan, who do you think is going to move faster? PR. Why? It's smaller. So I'm still going to get skid marks, but skid marks maybe that are a little bit farther down the way here. 
Okay, now A plus. I have two fragments. Plus because I have a restriction enzyme. So what is the smallest fragment going to be? How many base pairs is the smallest fragment? 377. 377. So where do you think it's going to, who is it going to move past marker wise? Marker 10. Marker 10. Because marker 10 is how many base 500. pairs? 500, right? It's smaller, so it should move farther. Okay, then its second piece is 4495. Is it going to move faster or slower than the biggest piece of pecan? Faster, faster right? Why is that? <coughs> it's, smaller. it's smaller. So how do I know Piara was cut? I'm going to compare what I would predict in my cut to my uncut. That'll tell me if it's cut. Is it cut in the right place? I'm going to compare my results to where I predicted it would travel in the marker. Okay? Now, how do I know that it was taped, the lig part? I know it was taped if, if I see a bunch of heavy pieces down here where it's all taped together, yeah? Because I, I should have taped all different combinations. If instead I don't see that, let's say instead I see something here, something here, something here, and something here. What does that tell me? It didn't ligate properly. Didn't properly. Because I have the four fragments. I have pecan's fragment here, I have A plus's fragment here, K plus's fragment here, and A plus, do you see what I'm saying? I have the four fragments in a tube together with no tape. Because if they had taped, they would be heavier and they would show up back here. Okay, so those are my predictions. When you look at your actual picture, you're going to look, does it match that? So the first thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at my um, marker, okay? And when I look at my marker, okay, this marker that's way out here, this is probably marker number what? 10. 10. Then this one is? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes? You okay with that? All right. And then I'm looking to see does it match? If this were my data, which it is actually, does it match what I would have predicted? I would, would predict that K minus and K plus should look different. That K minus is whole, and I would see some. Um, skid marks right there representing supercoiled open multimer and um, nick right and then I would expect two banding patterns this banding pattern right here I would say it's 807 base pairs and I said it would travel farther than marker 9 because marker 9 is how many base pairs a thousand base pairs and marker 10 is how many base pairs 500 so it's not going to travel as fast as that so did it meet my prediction yes because it traveled farther than marker nine. Then I look back here and I try to go, okay, where is this showing up? Somewhere, maybe between five and four, which is what I would predict, okay? Bless you. Here's A minus, okay? Here, here is A plus. Look at this guy out here. Now this one is probably really hard for you to see, why? How many base pairs is it? Like 377. 377, right? These other bigger pieces are like over 10 times bigger than it. So as far as staining it, it's hard to see a little thing as compared to a big thing, even if it's there. So that would be a very faint thing probably on your diagram, okay? And then this one traveled, I mean, there's not a huge difference between them. Maybe it traveled a little bit farther. Okay, when I, when, oh, sorry. Maybe it traveled a little bit farther, A minus than my K minus. But that, that panned out because they traveled farther than the markers I predicted. This part right here, four and fives, those are really hard to see because we didn't really separate those out. If we let it go another 40 minutes, you know, maybe we could see if it traveled literally between three and four and four and five. But keep in mind, your minuses, you don't really compare to the latter. Why don't you compare them to the latter? They're not fragments, right? They're whole. So you can't line them up. That's the apples and oranges part. I can compare K plus with the latter because they're both fragments. That's apple to apple, right? I can compare A plus to the latter because they're both fragments. But the whole I really can't compare. Then I look down here. Did I ligate? Well, it's looking like it. I don't have things out here. 
so I don't have any tiny pieces all by themselves. I have a bunch of big, happy, heavy things here in the back moving very slowly. So now let's take that information and apply it to your data table. Okay, so the first data table says um, whole plasmid configurations within the lane, multiple nicked, supercoiled. Would we expect the K minus to have whole plasmid? Yeah. Yes. yes, yes, I would. Oh, and I'm writing in white. That's super awesome. Okay. Okay, so would I expect it? Yes, I would expect it to have whole plasmid. Would you expect K plus to have whole plasmid? No. No. Would you expect A minus? Yes. Yes. Would I expect A plus? No. No, because it was cut. Would I expect the lig to have whole plasmid? Yes. Yes. Yes, I would then you have to look at your data and see if it was verified. I showed you how it was verified with my gel photo. You look at your gel photo and see if that's yes or no. Okay, let's go to the next column. Cut plasmids with two bands within the link. Two bands within the link. Would I expect K minus to have a cut plasmid? No. 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 Okay, K plus? Yes. yes. A, a minus? No. no. A plus? Yes. 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 Lig? No, I, I hope not. I hope it doesn't have two bands because there are four fragments in there and plus I think they're going to be all taped together. And then you have to look and just write yes or no. Did that happen for you? Okay, here, ligated plasmids with multiple bands within each lane. Now, I would not, I would say no to this because I don't have multiple, I just have my multiple skids, right? This is saying any combinations. So I would say no here. Should my K plus have ligated plasmids in it? No. 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 Yes. 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 And then actual yes or no. Did you get that? Okay, we good on data table one? Okay, so let's move on. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to data table two with our lines. All right. So this is to verify plasmids were cut in the correct location. We're going to compare it to the marker. The only ones we're going to look at for that are my our K pluses and our A pluses because those are the only ones that are cut. So um, fragment one, the biggest, I said up here, fragment one is the larger of the two fragments. So does anybody remember how big fragment one is? Did you write it down? You got them all? Do you have them all so I don't have to flip back and forth? Those are them right there, yeah? yeah? You got them? Okay, Swedish. So fragment one, you would say is what? 4705. 4705. And the little one is 807. And this one is? 4495. 4495. And the little one is? 377. So predicted. What did we say? Band observed after ladder number. So we thought 4705 ought to go past 4. We thought this guy ought to go past nine. nine. This one ought to go past four. four. And this one ought to go past ten. ten. Yes or no? Did it for you. Now, if you can't see anything, if your lane is empty for any of these, then you would write no data. Okay? If you can't confirm it with your gel, write no data in that spot. Okay? Questions or concerns on that? All right, so let's go back. I mean, let's go farther on. Look at the rest of your lab. It says insert labeled photo here. So you're gonna put it on your yellow copy and on your um, original. You should have your photo. And then you make a claim based on your driving question and make a statement on whether um, you could or could not verify that you could cut and splice DNA. So you wanna go back to your driving question and make your claim. Okay, our driving question. How can I verify that I have cut both ligated DNA to form a recombinant plasma? So you could say, I could verify that I cut, if you could, right? Th that I cut and ligated DNA to form a recombinant. That's your claim. I could or I could not. That's your claim. All right? And then you would say, and you would, so that's like one sentence in yellow. 
Then in blue, give evidence to support your claim. Use data tables, straight facts. I can verify that I cut when I compare A minus to A plus, and you would tell me about that data, and A plus and K plus to the marker, that I cut it in the right place. I can verify um, that I ligated due to the um, banding pattern in my ligated. And then you explain your reasoning here as to why it supports your claim, the connection between it. If I ligated new combinations, I should see a bunch of heavy bands because they move slowly. Okay, I can compare it to A plus. I can compare my A plus to the marker because these are known sizes and I've predicted how far it's going to travel based on that. Okay, so I'm predicting like um, one like summary statement and then four supporting pieces of evidence for, or you know, one for lig, one for A plus, one for K plus. It's not, it's not super long here. Three, four sentences max on your reasoning. And then any unavoidable error, okay? Now, here's the deal. You are not in an experiment that is cheap. So if you screwed up on your gel electrophoresis, you can't go back and go, oh, I'm gonna do you know, digestion again and lig ligation again and redo gel electrophoresis. So for you, if you make an, a mistake, it is now unavoidable because you cannot change it. So if you say, we must have mixed not enough stuff in our A plus tube because, and because I couldn't see it in the gel photo, right? So if you have any error, you're gonna tell me about it then. Okay, and then last but not least, okay, is your conclusion. Our data supports or does not my, support my hypothesis. So let's go back and look at that hypothesis that you wrote. If I cut two plasmas with the same restriction enzymes, mix the resulting fragments together and ligate new combinations of plasma, then I can verify that the plasmas were cut, cut in the correct place and ligated together gel electrophoresis. So can you make a conclusion? Did you support that hypothesis? Was your data there to do that? Then just tell me that in your conclusion. And then I believe also remember if there's anything you would do differently. You know, maybe for some of you, you would do something a little bit different if you would be more careful on loading your solutions or have a strategy on loading solutions. You could identify that there. Okay. Do you understand how to do the analysis for your lab? Okay. Do you need to talk about setting up lab B at all? Have you looked at it? Because yeah. that, that's due next class. The pre lab one. Pre lab. Mm -hmm. Do you need me to talk about it or are you fine? Is it pretty straightforward? Yeah, yeah, it was like easy peasy. I told you exactly what to what to write. Okay, any questions on this lab? Yes. Uh, so like uh, regarding my data, a lot of the fragmented, like the 807 and the 377, it was very faint. So like uh, I can see it, but I had to kind of zoom in. And on the black and white photos, it doesn't show. Okay, so, can I make a statement about that before you go any yeah. farther? Not to interrupt, but I wanted to tell them. Even if I couldn't see this, let's say I couldn't see this. Okay. I'm making it purple, okay? Couldn't see it. Could it, you still tell me whether or not you cut? Yeah. Yeah, how? Based on the first fragment. Yeah, exactly. A minus stops right here, right? In the first fragment, just like you said is traveling faster than here. So just because I can't see the teeny tiny, because this piece traveled farther than A minus, I still verified that I cut it. Okay. I just couldn't view the second smaller piece. Okay, so you still did it. You still supported your hypothesis. What else? Anything else on this lab? Okay, so I don't think we're gonna get to um, content review, but this this is good review, got you ready. Okay, questions, concerns? Um, so yes. For the picture that we have to print out for gel electrophoresis. Which I printed out for you. Yeah, um, do you want two copies of those? Or one one copy one? on your original, one copy on the one that gets turned into me. Okay. Yeah. So I made enough, so you have two copies. I photocopied enough. Yes. So I have a question from our data is exclusively, but um, we were able to cut it and not verify if it was ligated correctly. So yes. in the conclusion, conclusion? we put partial, like we were able to partially support it? Yes, okay. absolutely. Absolutely say that. Okay. What else? Anything else? Yes. Also a question, like, this is our group. Um, when we did ours, we like messed up the order of like the, the ligate from left to right. Doesn't that, matter. Does that count as an unavoidable error? Or since it was self-caused, it's like. 
No, the reason why I held you to an order is so you're more likely to be able to make comparisons and see, and I can talk to you about it. But it doesn't have, as long as you know what order you put it in, that's what's most important. So that doesn't take your data out of consideration. You just didn't order it in a way that others could relate to it based on their data. Easily, anyway. What else? Are you feel strong? Feel better? Okay, Swedish. Okay, get your lab done and don't forget to get your pre-lab done. You're super smart, scientists.